Hi, my name is Verf, and this is my one defense hardcore ultimate Iron Man. Welcome back everyone to another episode. If you haven't seen the first episode, I would definitely recommend to give that a watch. I will put a link down below. In the last episode, we got things started and made a lot of progress, but I didn't really mention any of my goals yet. I will be focusing on separate goals each episode to slowly build up the account. This way I can make it so every video has a more specific focus. However, I have a list of gear and items I want to go for. This is basically a best in slot gear list for the account that I can get and I want to share this to give you guys an idea of what's coming in the future. I designed a little graphic for you guys to give you guys a nice overview. So as you can see there's a lot of items on this list. Some of these items are definitely optional. Think about items like the Rangers tunic and the Robin Hood hat. They are pretty RNG to get and not 100% necessary but I still put them on there because they are best in slot. Um, we have all kinds of items here. We basically have the God Robes vestment set. This is going to be very useful for Godwa dungeon. We got the fire cape early on. Uh, black DI chaps, best in slot chaps for ranged. Then we have the medium clue boots, uh, manacles, wizard boots and ranger boots. I have to mention by the way, over half of these items are storable on this account. That's why I love being one defense on this account. Because I'm playing a hardcore ultimate Iron Man, I don't have the most options for storage. So having a minimal amount of items or a lot of storage options is definitely helpful. Then we got a couple of halos. I got the Zamrak halo because I want to use that for Godwa dungeon. And we have an LMS halo because that's just quick to get. And then more endgame stuff, we have the Mage Arena 2 cape and the Inferno cape. For magic, we are going for the Chaos Druid ropes, which is in the wilderness, so that will be very interesting. But again, the set is completely storable, so that's awesome. Then we have some more basic stuff, uh, Mithril Gloves, should be able to get that pretty early. We got some Onyx Jewelry, uh, Region Bracelet and Fury are the best in slot jewelry. Uh, we got some more standard stuff on there, we got the Berserker Ring, the God Books and the Occult Necklace. Mostly stuff from Slayer. And then we have a bunch of weapons. Now I have to mention, this is a little flexible and uh, it's, it's mostly just an overview. But I definitely want the Trident and the Blowpipe. And I need the Master one for Inferno and ACB. So these four items I definitely want to go for. While I go for the ACB, I'm most likely going to get a Saradomen Sword. So the Blessed Saradomen Sword is definitely on there too. But then there's a God Sword. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going for this. It's more like an optional item that I could get. And then the Sight and the Tebow are general end game tiles so the site basically means tob items such as rapier uh sang staff and site and the tebow means regular raids items like tebow kodai dragon class but that's super end game stuff and i just have it on there but yeah that's the overview uh i think it's pretty clear like this what i'm gonna do is every time i get new items from this list i will be marking them green as the series progresses we will be slowly completing these items if we don't die of course but i'm going to be super careful on this account yeah i hope you guys are as excited as me because i'm really excited for this account in this series and making some nice progress all right we have been running on roofs for almost 10 hours now and that's 50 agility look at that and we have over 100 marks of grace now so getting some good progress I decided to invest some of the Marks of Grace that I got and I got myself the Graceful Top and Legs. They recently made it so that separate pieces also have a regeneration rate so getting separate pieces is actually good right now. 4 pieces to go. While I'm working on agility I'm growing cats. Each cat can be traded in for 200 death runes so that's pretty nice. And I also need a full grown cat for the recipe for the Zester quest. So not a bad thing to work on, that's the first death runes. Alright, time to buy another graceful piece. I got myself the hood and I got myself the gloves as well now. So we only need two more pieces left. Probably around 80 marks of grace in total, so let's finish this. Cat number two. We need boots and cape, right? Yes, let's buy those. Graceful boots. Graceful cape. Full graceful on the new account. That was a nice little grind. Nice little grind. All the construction preparations are done. So I have almost everything to start the construction grind. Besides GP. I need a lot of GP. Probably around a million GP in total. To buy all of the oak planks at the sawmill. So I'm going to camp the agility pyramid for quite a bit of time. Get a lot of agility levels for free. And make all of my early game money. In my opinion, the Agility Pyramid is one of the best ways to make money early on. 
All you basically need is, is graceful and a bit of agility, so let's get to work. Alright, this will get me 100,000 GPs. Look at that. Eee, look at that. Got myself a 19 construction real quick with the regular planks that spawn at fishing trawler. I was able to really easily get them because of the arty cloak. And this level is the requirement for oak chest. So once I properly start trading construction, we have the level to, to start out with oak planks straight away. Yeah, nice little grind in between. Let's continue with the pyramid. Alright, that is the last pyramid run. I run out of uh, water skin, so let's trade in this last pyramid. We have 380,000 GP to start out with, so that should give us quite a few construction levels. Uh, once I run out of money, I'll go back to the pyramid, make more money, but let's see what we can get with 380,000 GP. So before I start, I want to show you guys the method I'm using for construction because I got a lot of questions about it. I used this method on my first ultimate ironman as well and it's actually a pretty decent way to start out construction. Basically all you have to do is you teleport to Varrock, run from Varrock to the sawmill. You chop the oak logs outside of the sawmill, make it into oak planks, teleport to your house, build stuff in your house and then teleport back to Varrock and basically you repeat that process. I was getting up to like 25-30k XP per hour. So that really wasn't too bad early on. Now obviously you can improve this method with the uh, balloon system. But I don't have 30 farming and I didn't want to work on that first. So this method worked just fine. So I got a heart clue nest from wood cutting the oak locks and this is the potential first heart clue I could complete. There's many cool things I can get from heart clues but the most important thing I need is black dehyde chaps. So they will play a very important role. Um, maybe I get lucky and maybe I can complete it, we'll see. First step completed, second step completed, third step completed. No I can't do that, I need nature spirit for that I think. Oh man, imagine, that was so close, the first heart clue on the account. Nah, it was too good to be true, but that was a, it was worth an attempt. We might get some more from woodcutting, so too bad. As you can see in my inventory, I only have 8000 GP, so we ran out of money again from construction. We got over 40 construction, so that was a pretty decent start. But yeah, it's time to hit up the agility pyramid again and make a bunch of money. Alright, that is over 200,000 GP made again, did 20 runs. So let's invest that into construction again and see what level we can get out of it. This oak workbench will give us 50 construction guys. That's awesome, that is the level I need for the portal room. I'm planning on building at least 2 portal rooms pretty early on on the account to get all the basic teleports. It just gives so much freedom and it will help out a lot for clues and questing later on. They are pretty expensive as you can see, a portal room is 100,000 GP. So I have to make a lot of GP, but that's definitely something I will be working on. And we need 8 more construction levels to finish construction. So let's continue. I decided to take a small break from construction. I'm doing a bunch of easy clues for book pages and got vestment ropes. And that is actually my first page and it's an armadillo page too. That is actually the best book. So I want to complete that really badly. So that's really good to get. I'm going to hold on to that. Um, after I complete the horror from the deep quest, I can put that page in a book and then just drop the book to get rid of the page. And I have some space available while doing construction. So that's awesome. That's 30 crafting. Decided to do some charter ships because I needed this level for a clue scroll. So... Nice to get this requirement out of the way. And for the people that don't know, you can actually enter Port Pass Madness after completing the Priest in Peril quest. So if you want to train early crafting, all you need to do is complete the quest. And then you can just take the charter ship to this location and start crafting. So you don't need to quest for the city. Oh my god. No way, that's my first vestment buddy. And it's actually the best one. It's a Zemi one. I wanted the Zemi or the Saradomin one for Godma Dungeon in the future. Wow. 
That is awesome. That is some really good clue scroll luck. Hell yeah, guys. That's technically like a best in slot on the account already. Another pyramid run. We made over 300,000 GP. Look at that beautiful cash stack in the inventory. Let's head back to construction. I think I will be able to finish the construction level with this GP, so... 50 wood cutting, very nice. I can now chop mahogany lock. I probably need that in the future for construction, so. 58 construction, the last level I need for now. I can boost. Oh wait, was that the money servant pouch? That's good too. Anyways, I can boost plus eight with the saw and the stew boost and make the medium treasure chest. So that's the last level for now. Basically preparations for the medium clue grind later on. I can also make all the portal rooms and basically everything I need for now. So that's it. The construction grind is finished for now. We are back at the agility pyramid once again. And we made 360,000 GP this time. We made over at least 1.2 mil so far here I would say. But this gold is needed for all the uh, portal room stuff in my house. I'll be able to build a bunch of portals so that will be awesome. So let's make it. First portal room mate, let's put some teleports in it. And there we go, that's the first three teleport portals in my house, awesome. I decided to do the library for magic levels for the remaining teleport rooms in the house. I need the magic level for the Camelot and the Arty teleport. I also want to unlock this spellbook for the unsold hats, because that might be good for prayer later on. And it turned out the magic XP is actually incredible here, so I decided to just get 55 magic for high hogs. Because I don't really need to spend any money on runes. It's also probably way faster to get it this way, so... Did a couple hours of library. Alright, here we go guys. Let's get this uh, milestone. I thought I might as well just get 55 here. Which I did for High Elk. Very cool, very cool. That's gonna help out a lot. Now I can just bring nature runes everywhere and whenever I get good loot I can just insta High Elk it. Don't have to bother selling it to stores. So the remaining goals for the treasure chest are a bunch of quests. And one of the quests I need to do is the Shadow of the Storm. And I want to get myself a weapon for the boss. So I decided to kill some fire giants for a rune scimitar. Oh! I got it! I called it! I told you guys, I'm gonna get it early. Holy shit, yes! That's the rune scimitar. <laughs> 13 kills. 13 kills, guys. Alright, there we go. 750 XP with 21 prayer. Nice. First quest completed. Second quest completed. Here we go. Nice. Completed the quest. This might give me crafting. Yep. 31 crafting. Emerald amulets. That might be needed for a clue somewhere. So that's pretty good. Oh, there we go. Holy shit. Oh, jeez. That was stressful. <laughs> that was stressful. Okay. Whew. Right. So now I can choose the XP, right? Ranged. Oh, there we go, guys. <laughs> defense? Yeah. Imagine if I use it on defense there. <laughs> 27 ranged. Beautiful. That quest was a struggle. Holy. And I believe... Okay, I need 400 more XP and then I can, I can get the bone crossbow, so that's perfect. That's out of the way. Great. Moment of silence for the rune crafting level. Oh, and a magic level. Nice. 56 magic. 22 rune crafting. I haven't touched rune crafting at all. I love this quest. <laughs> Three, uh, 21 levels, basically. Not bad. And there we go. I can now make the crystal saw. That's an invisible plus three construction boost. And you and you can combine that with the stew boost. So now all we need is the stew boost. Alright, so I started the recipe for the Zesta quest. 
I need to do a couple of these sub quests because mithril gloves are early on my best in slot gloves. The best in slot gloves I can actually get later on is a region bracelet which is plus 7. But I need a pretty high crafting level for that so I'm not going to bother with that for now. But yeah I think in the next episode we might get mithril gloves. Probably good to get out of the way early on. It's been so long since I've done these quests but they, they're pretty quick and fun so I, I don't mind. Yeah. 7000 cooking XP. There we go. Evil Dave quest completed. And 29 cooking from that. I'll take that. And uh, now I can boost for the medium treasure chest. I got the crystal saw ready. And I can get the plus 5 boost. That will give me level 66. So let's go prepare that I guess. Yes, I got it. 63, that's what I need. That's a plus 5 boost. We have to be fast, guys. I should be fine on time. Alright, let's make this beautiful treasure chest. There it is. The teak treasure chest has been made. I can store all beginner, easy and all the medium clue rewards in that chest. And the monk lex that I got in the first episode can also go in this chest. So yeah, this chest is actually amazing for this account because I can store pretty much all of my best in slot boots. Uh, Ranger boots, spiked manacles and wizard boots. So there it is guys. That took a while, but um, yeah, we worked hard for this chest. But that was one of the early goals I had on this account. Next episode, we're going to start some medium clues and some hunter for gear upgrades. So I'm pretty excited. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, the best way to support is liking and subscribing. Helps to get the video out there and I'll see you soon.